right, so we're going to reference our globals. Uh, sprite batch dot begin and globals dot sprite batch dot end. Okay, now we haven't really established our menu graphics uh, like the background graphics and things like that. Uh, say, uh, you know, our borders and frames and background. Uh, so uh, this is where we're actually going to do that later on. I'll say draw menu graphics. <clears throat> and uh, that's not to be confused with uh, our menu options. So next we're going to say draw menu options. And that's what we're going to do first up here. So let's go ahead and dim menu y as an integer and this is going to equal <clears throat> menu position dot y we want to grab the y value from that for our menu y and this will store the position of our entries and then we can increment this value uh, to create a spacing between our entries dynamically so um, I'm going to start that with plus 20 because when we add graphics and a frame and stuff, we don't want it to be directly on the frame. We want it to be kind of centered a little bit. And you can kind of tweak that as you go. So uh, next step, we need to loop through our entries to get each one. So we will say 4x equals 0 to entries dot count minus one we're gonna say if uh, x equals menu select meaning that x is equal to the uh, index value of our menu that is currently selected then we're going to draw globals dot sprite batch dot draw string and let's go ahead and use our Georgia font so I'm going to say fonts dot Georgia 16 and the text that I want to draw is whatever is in the entries item and since we're looping through our entries we're going to have an index value that we can use to grab that uh, text value so we'll say entries dot item and we'll use our index value which is X and we want to grab the text value from that item next up uh, for our position we're going to add a new vector2 and that uh, the X value of that will be the menu position dot X plus the menu size it's kind of a pain to fit all this in here so we have to do this right. Uh, we want the menu size dot x, meaning the width of our menu, divided by 2. And this is to center it in our screen. Minus fonts dot Georgia 16 dot measure string It gets kind of complicated here. It'll start to make sense uh, after you do it a few times. You can kind of see what's going on. We're measuring the string uh, to help us position it properly. So we're going to say uh, entries dot item dot x dot text. So we're measuring um, the text string in that index. And then we have to divide that by 2 to divide it in half. And 
Um, so that's how we that's how we're going to center it in in the middle of the screen properly, and in the min middle of our menu here. Um, for the, for the Y value, we're just going to use menu Y. Thankfully, that one's more simple. And then we have to give it a color. So uh, you can give it whatever color uh, sounds good to you. I'm just going to do color.red um, for my active entries. So when we select an entry, it should turn red. And it looks like I made a little error here, so I gotta um, see where I messed up. Probably a, a parentheses or something like that. Uh, give me one second here. All right, sorry about that. I found my little mistake here. Um, you might have already caught it. Uh, whenever you're setting up a vector, you need an X and Y, and that includes these other vectors that we've set up. We uh, didn't specify which vector of our measure string we were using. Um, we want the x value from that. So all we have to do is go to the end of text and put dot x. That gets kind of complicated. And you know, it, you look at it, it may not make sense at first, but if you, you kind of go through it a few times, it'll start to sink in a bit. Um, here we're establishing the x value of where we want to draw, meaning what part from left to right on the screen we want to draw, and then um, we're using the, the sprite font's measure string to see how wide it is so it will properly place it um, along with the other items in the list on the menu. So we're going to end up using this same command a few times. We'll probably be able to uh, just copy and paste that thankfully. So what we need to do is come down here because we're not done with our if statement and we're going to do else if uh, entries dot item and the index value dot enabled equals true, then we're going to draw it a little differently, okay? So now let's go ahead, let's go ahead and just dump this in here. What I'm going to do is just copy this whole thing so we don't have to type that out again. And this one we're going to say we're going to change the color to white. Okay. And then finally, we're going to finish off our if statement here by saying else. Sorry, I have an incoming phone call. I got pause again. All right, so let's just grab our um, the same one we just did. Actually, it should already be in the clipboard. I just forgot because I was on the phone. <laughs> and we'll paste it down here one more time, and then I will explain what's going on here. Um, so, let's go through this real quick. We're saying uh, loop through our entry values, and if x, being the, the current index, is the same as our menu select index from above, then that means that entry in the list is selected, so we want it to draw a different color than the rest of the items on the list. So we're going to highlight that in a red color. Um, otherwise, if the object is enabled but is not selected, like this one, uh, we want it to draw in a white color. And then finally, if neither of these are true, uh, meaning that the item is disabled, then it'll be grayed out. We'll use a gray text or something like that. So that's what's happening there. <clears throat> now there's one more thing that we need to do uh, when drawing our menu entries here, and that is to increment with each loop our menu Y value. 
and I'm going to increment it by uh, 30 pixels. So what will happen is it will go through each entry, it will draw it to the screen, and draw the color based upon um, whether it's selected or not or enabled. And then once it's done doing that, it's going to advance down the screen by 30 pixels before going back to the top and looping through the next item and drawing that one. So I think that that will actually allow us to uh, draw our screen. I think we're about ready to give this a test here.